Prashant from Minority Technologies, uh, working as a user experience designer. Uh, I think I'm the youngest speaker here with three years of experience. So basically, uh, I'll, I'll be talking about uh, how to bridge the gap between the business and technology with the help of UX. So first, we'll be talking about the technology, and then I'll be giving you a design story, and uh, we'll talk, talk more about the story. So uh, what technology we are taking here is the Internet of Things. So basically, we'll start with the powerful quote. Uh, by Ian Godwin. So he said that uh, he, he actually compares Internet of Things with electricity. He says uh, the same amount of transformation uh, the electricity gave to the world uh, will be given by the Internet of Things for the life and the work. So that, that kind of a technology uh, is Internet of Things and how we are actually using it is what we are going to see. So basically we'll start with the myth. So uh, this actually is not Internet of Things. Uh, you're, just connecting billions of devices together is not called Internet of Things. What actually Internet of Things is, those connected devices, they form an uh, ecosystem of uh, intelligent systems and then they, they do things themselves or you know, they automate things. So that is how Internet of Things basically work. So we'll make that very clear before we go into the presentation. So uh, I just wanted to make sure how powerful IoT is. So we have some interesting, you know, mind-blowing numbers of IoT. Uh, by Accenture Research Company. So they say that by 2020, 30 billion of devices will be connected to each other. And then 189 startups are already working on IoT and the use cases uh, corresponding to the uh, in IoTs. And then uh, the economic gain is phenomenal. It's like 7.1 trillion will be added to the US economy. And then 1.8 trillion will be for the uh, ch uh, China economy. And then the whole global economy will be increased by 14.2 trillion. So uh, are you all uh, know, convinced with these numbers like this is going to be the phenomenal technology? Yes? Or do we have any other thought like this may not? OK, great. So <clears throat> what are we doing with this disruptive technology? So what the businesses are doing with this technology? Uh, why, are, why aren't we not seeing much of internet of, uh, you know, uh, internet of things in businesses? So this is the key, uh, key question. Uh, the main use case we all know is smart homes. Smart homes by Samsung or smart homes by Philips. This is the only Internet of Things use case that we have come across in our whole life. So uh, we actually use this phenomenal technology for, uh, for you know, uh, just adjusting your air conditioner temperature or stabilizing your room, uh, you know, locking the doors. So this is the whole use case we have been using through. But uh, if you see these kind of numbers, this, th that use case is not going to match these numbers. So what the problem? What is the problem with the business? So when we see 84 percent of the companies that we actually uh, uh, studied are okay to you know, implement the business, uh, Internet of Things in their business model, and then they they can they wanted to do it. But the industry reality is just seven percent of the companies, seven percent of the businesses, industries, or the organizations are actually having a strategic plan to implement. Internet of Things. So, uh, do you see there is a large gap, the 84% and the 7%, it is, it is a very vast gap. The only reason is they do not have a strategic plan, they do not have any use cases or you know, they, they haven't uh, had any exposure to Internet of Things. So, let's quickly see some examples of how these 7% uh, of companies are using effectively the IoT. Uh, so, the first one is the automobiles. So, this company uh, Tim Armstrong, this guy is the CEO of AOL. So he says that uh, your cars will be uh, you know, having sensors that will be automatically sending the data of your car's health to the service centers, which will be like you no know, uh, captured by the service centers. So one day, if your car is like you no know, had, had to be changed uh, oil or you no, know, you have to uh, give it for the service, the crew will automatically come to your home and then they fix it and then they go. So you don't need to go to your uh, service service stations. So the next one uh, will be the consumer goods where, you know, these refrigerators will be, re will be having sensors that will be sensing the products that are inside your uh, refrigerators. So whenever it runs out of stock, it automatically, uh, you know, contacts your uh, nearest grocery store and then they place the order. Uh, industries. So industries, uh, this guy called, uh, you know, Marathon Oil Refineries, they actually use these sensors in the hats of uh, employees. And then you know they, they detect the smart, I mean uh, the poisonous gases, and then uh, they alert the employees when it is you no know, when it is an emergency. And the employees can also use the panic button, you know, to evacuate the building if there is some you no know, disaster there. Uh, 
the next one will be uh, information technology. I think almost everybody are from the in IT background, right? So we haven't used IoT anywhere. So, but th this company, Fang Digital, they use if this then that technology in their business. So I, I'm sure everybody knows what is if this then that, right? So you basically can set rules between applications and uh, you know uh, make it work for you. So what they have done is they have used uh, this technology to collect the tweets uh, that the clients are posting with the you know that is relevant to their company, and then they seize the opportunity and reach the clients. As simple as that. Agriculture, we we had no idea how agriculture will be utilizing uh, Internet of Things, but basically this company Monta. Monsanto, what they do is they act, they collect data from the soil, like what, how fertile the soil is, what is the mon monsoon time, so what is the crop yield, at what time, what crop should be you know uh, planted for good yield, and then they give it to the farmers of uh, Germany so that they get the best out of the yields. So this these are some quick uh, examples, and then what will be the impact? So these seven percent of the companies who are already using, they have said that it drives revenue growth, it it improves operational efficiency. It enhances employee safety, customer experience, and then you know it automates the monotonous work done by the done by the users. So so much you know, so much of impact IoT is IoT is basically giving in the business. But still, only seven percent are using it. So that is all about the technology. We don't want to waste much time. So let's quickly move to the story. So <clears throat> this story is about a 200-year-old financial firm in the world. So why we are taking this big financial firm? Uh, as an example or as a you know, as a pioneer in this field is that uh, any startup or any mid sized company can easily get into a new technology you know they don't have a bigger client base they don't have a larger revenue system or they don't you know they, they don't have a problem in changing the business model but this company is 200 year old financial firm that is almost managing 1.7 trillion assets under its custody which is way more than the total indian gdp so uh, what uh, this story it's about the UX team and the technology team uh, uh, who brought in the IoT and then how they brought in the uh, revenue to the company. So uh, a group of IoT, I mean a group of UX people and technology guys were assembled and then they were given a given a task. So the task was very simple. Uh, it was to improve the client experience and the employee experience of the company. And there was a small disclaimer: you should not change any business model or product or service. So they should not be touching anything because they have a larger client base, like millions of users across 100 plus countries. So that is the disclaimer they had. <clears throat> uh, so these uh, the, these guys, uh, a group of uh, UX and the technology guys, they started analyzing uh, what places uh, have the you know improvement, uh, what places can contribute to the improvement of this experience. And then uh, the top one was uh, the time taken for s resolving the prior one incidents. Uh, I'm sure everybody uh, are aware of what Pry1 incidents are in the company, right? So Pry1 incidents are like uh, very critical incidents that are raised in your system, I mean, in your, in your service or a product that would give a you know, massive impact to your clients and your revenue. So this has to be solved by the company within uh, five years of stipulated time. So as soon as the issue raises, the, the company or the technology team has to solve it within five years to, uh, you know, to avoid any impact by the client to the clients or the revenue. Yeah. So and then this was the main thing that this company was lagging because it, uh, the average time it should take is five, and then but the company is actually taking eight hours for the prior one incidents to get solved, and it has not decreased for the past ten years. So that was one potential thing which can be improved. So this was found by the UX team of this company, and then what they did was they tried to analyze the root cause for this problem, and then they found two use cases where the uh, where this can be solved. So let's go to the use case now. Uh, so this was the first use case. So the, uh, the, uh, the actual problem was people were not you know, checking their mails or they were away from the desk. So whenever the, whenever the incidents are raised and then whenever the uh, mails are sent to the teams to solve, people are away from the desk. So they were in the breakout areas or you no, know, they, were, they were chatting or you no, know, they did not check the mails. So this is the, this is the basic problem or the basic root cause for that you know, uh, decre not decreasing in the time of resolving. So anybody uh, want to take a guess of how the company approached this? You know, I gave you the technology so that you no, know, very any simple solution. You you might get an alert on your mobile or something. See exactly. So very very simple thing. So what they did was uh, this was the initiative that was done in the company, uh, Internet of Business Things. That's just a fancy name for Internet of Things. 
uh, what they did was they actually tried to collect all the inter all the business related things that can be connected to the network say ip phones servers database email uh, outlook emails uh, applications internal applications blackberry phones so everything so they started collecting everything and then they started creating smart systems that and then connect them logically so this was the initiative done so the solution was they connected the incident systems ip lights and phones so whenever a new incident was raised to the company with a pri one uh, the lights on the floor will be re will be uh, will be uh, you know glowed like you know if, if it is a pri one the red light and the pri two it will be in amber and pri three will be in green and then the same same information of the incidents will be sent to the clients in their mobile phones also so wherever you are you you got to you got to hurry back to your desk and then start working on this incident uh, this enhanced the customer experience so do you think this actually would have uh, decreased the time taken for resolving the incident there was actually a phenomenal decrease it decreased from 8 hours to 5.5 hours in just 6 months so this was this was just a very small connection between three objects and and the result was just amazing the second one was uh, when people were in a hurry to you know solve the incidents they were they were finding some difficulties in joining the calls you know they have the bridge calls where you have to dial a 12 digit number and then a passcode of five digits and then people are getting pissed off they if one number is wrong you have to dial the whole number again so this was a crucial problem they faced uh, so any idea how they solved this problem you know any wild guesses yeah it could it also could uh, could be a solution but what they did was they actually t uh, took the information from ip uh, ip phones and the outlook meetings so every every time you have a outlook meeting your uh, dial in numbers will automatically be pushed to your ip phones and your mobile phones so wherever you are you can just uh, have a one click and then you know get into the call uh, and start resolving the issues so it was very simple for them it en enhanced the employee experience to a larger extent so this was the second use case And then third one. So there were uh, employees who were doing monotonous uh, Excel works or data entry works, where they, you know every time they need to, every day they come, they enter something, and they or they have to take screenshots and send it to the clients. So uh, about the account details, as it is a financial firm, right? So that was one thing that was frustrating, and that was actually decreasing the productivity of the employees uh, for for these kind of you no know, simple works. So uh, uh, so this was actually you no know, actually solved by simple. Uh, option of IFTTT, but this IFTTT was done for the internal applications for the employees. So employees can set rules between internal applications. So uh, the employees can like set rules like uh, every day Monday morning submit my timesheet. So that's all. So I don't have to go and fill my timesheet. Automatically submits a timesheet as per your projects. Uh, and bots, bots are like virtual uh, robots, uh, like process automations where you know we need to automate anything you just can uh, give a step uh, step of things that has to be automated it automatically does it so it is as simple as that and then uh, the company is also working on uh, capabilities for robotics in financial markets so what what are they doing is they are trying to replace advisors into robots where no robots will be giving investors some advices about how to invest in the company uh, so this so <clears throat> seeing all these things so do you think this actually would have impacted the business or you know, the uh, or the client experience yeah okay so see these are like very very simple use cases very small connect connectivities between the ip lies and the ip phones but the results are like phenomenal if you see the client result client satisfaction results of the company it it went from 91 to 97 in just six months 89 to 94 uh, said that you no know, uh, would recommend the company and then innovative solutions went up to 90 percent client expectations was 99 it was the top top of the company have never achieved it and then uh, strategic partnership was 92 and then better than the competitors was 68 uh, so so this was the phenomenal result the company achieved with these small implementations of this uh, whole technology <coughs> so uh, what is the take for the UX people here? Is is the I, I think is the major part we have to cover. Yeah. So okay. So this is what the UX UX designers have to think about. Basically, we need to identify the root cause and then match it with the technology. 
it is not like you know I have a technology where I can connect a phone and a light. Do you have a use case? So it it cannot happen that way, right? So the U it was the whole initiative of the UX people where you know they found the root cause, they found what is the exact thing that has to be done, and then the technical team came inside and they implemented what has to be done. So uh, so this is the takeaway for the UX people here: how to bridge the gap between the uh, business and the techno and the technology through UX. So the more we connected the better it got. Any questions? I expect one question from the whole audience here. No? Which company that did this? Nobody wanted to know? Okay. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm done with this here.